So hello everybody, it's me, Just Ja. Um, I'm here today. I've come come to London to see my bro, Dwayne. Um, met him about a month or so ago now. You know, he's got a deep story, interesting, real guy, really lived it, really about it. Raw guy, you know, been through the wars, got the scars. So Dwayne, um, just just uh, I like I like to start with my guests is basically like, you know, let them know a little bit about your upbringing, where you come from, you know, the beginning, how it all, how you got on the path to the to the madness. Yeah. Do you know what I'm saying? Yeah, I'm with you. So um, thanks, uh, Ja, for having me on your show. Um, just yeah. before I start, I'm just going to do a little disclaimer. Okay. Because obviously, yeah, I've been through what I've been through, but I'm not here to glamorise. Yeah. Um, I'm not here to boast of what I've done, what I've got where I've been and all that nonsense, but it's to bring a message. Obviously going through the stories, I'm probably gonna go into the zones and yeah. it will look, might look a certain way, but I'm going into the zones because it's, it's, it's in capturing, it's, it was my life. It was, it was like a movie at the time, but um, I came through the other side and obviously I don't want young people to think that that is the way, cause it's painful, it's death, prison, and pain to your family members, and I wouldn't, um, I wouldn't wish it upon my own worst enemy. So, yeah, yeah. I just want to put that disclaimer there at the beginning before I go into all the nitty gritty of my past life. Yeah, yeah, I like that, bro, because that that's that's the realness of you, isn't it? You know what I'm saying? You're humble. You get me. Mm. You're just speaking about your experience to guide and show others, really. That like, you know what I'm saying? You can go through all that traumas and come out of the other side and be to where you are now. Of course, of course. So you're getting into it then, Dwayne. So the upbringing, man, the, yeah. the, the get-go, man, like. Yeah, the nitty-gritty. The so nitty-gritty, man. <laughs> basically, um, I grew up, my mum and dad were there at the beginning. I must have been three, three, four years old when it can't, it was like normal, we go to work, etc. But then um, obviously there was domestic shouting, fighting and smashing and all that stuff. Yeah. But my old man was legitimate. He played football women's man obviously playing a field and all that mm. so that's why it obviously didn't work with my mum and my dad but he he um he left and my mum started drinking heavily and as she's drinking heavily obviously she, she was just doing her thing other fella she got another fella and he was obviously about it moving bits and pieces of, of green of loud cannabis whatever you want to call it and um there was domestic violence going on then, but people started coming in and out of the house. He was moving bits and pieces. And then um, I didn't, me and my little brother would be out on the streets. I remember roaming the streets. Let me break it down before we come along. While my mum was in that period on her own drinking and stuff, I remember going into shops, stealing things. This is under five years old. And when I look back and I speak with my old dear now, her eyes well up because that's how deep it was. I was embedded in the roads. So I remember stealing these little owls in the shop, the shop up the road, and I'll go in the bush, I'll put the, the owl there, I'll go over and get another one, and then I'll put it there, I'll go over and get another one, and then I'll knock at people's doors. I said, do you wanna buy this for a pound? Mm. So I was a hustler from hustler, day one, yeah, I had yeah. the entrepreneur in me. So that was happening from early. Um, and then mum's boyfriend come in, the house started getting uh, raided. Um, and then before I know it, I remember one time, I think I just started primary school and my mum picked us up on the bus and she told us, duck down, duck down as we're going past the house. And then we ducked down, we went to a refuge for, for, for mums that obviously domestic violence and all that. Long story short, we ended up, she ended up getting back with him and we moved from the house that we was in, garage on the side, it was a not, not nice house, into this estate, in Slough, Brickwell Estate. So we moved there and then my house was one of them houses where people go for puff, green, whatever it is. And we had two pit bulls, pit bull terriers. One was called bitch, one was called rebel. Yeah. And it was, the, it was that house. My mum was about it. Um, and yeah, there's people in and out buying, selling goods. So I'm pretending to play Sega Mega Drive playing computer, but I'm downloading information. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? My mum will say, hey, I'll go and ask Chino or whatever, go and ask her if she wants to buy that gold chain. So I run over, Chino, my mum said, do you want to buy that chain? Yeah. For however, a one or A, B and C. So I was programmed um, to be a hustler, see, yeah. seeing what, what's worth, this is worth that. So um, 
got involved with the boys on the estate and um mum and uh, they was just having domestics fighting arguing and then they split up yeah so now it's just me my mum and my siblings but now my mum's going out raving leaving us with the babysitter i'm jumping on the car bonnet like that and she's <laughs> with all her power she's like yeah. boom and then I'll, I'll, I'll jump off go into the estate with the older so that's where i found my my belonging yeah and that obviously fake love but you didn't know at the time yeah are you yeah. with me i'm with you bro so do you know like even growing up in that environment where like there's the domestic violence like i can relate in it mm. you get me like it, it's making me like feel emotional yeah, yeah, yeah. bro yeah because yeah, like, i know what you're going through kind of yeah, yeah, yeah. and then and then do you know like when you're seeing all that and you're going through all that was it affecting like you know school life did you ever do any school life or all like that besides yeah. just yeah, of course. So I didn't make it to secondary school. Yeah. In primary school, I would they call me Dwayne the Pain. Yeah. You with me? So I was um I just I just end up going from the primary yeah. school. So I was I left Straight in, in the streets. Straight in the streets. From yeah. from the ages of like eight, nine, ten, I was on the streets. Wow. Um I was on the streets just yeah downloaded information at first the the, the older said now nah, you can't come with us now nah, yeah. you're too you're too young you're too young but after a while when i be cut started becoming gay because everything you were seeing yeah like you're saying at home with mm. your mom and, and everyone and there's people coming in and out and the drug bust it was yeah, all yeah, just yeah. coming into you and and that's yeah. what that's what people don't realize as young kids we're, we're soaking it all in us yeah, in yeah. a sponge it's getting embedded in us yeah. and then we're becoming these these like you know products yeah products of, of the downloads of the yeah. information monkey see monkey do yeah and that's that was kind of it so my mum will go out raving i'll be on the state with the olders and um i, st I had anger i had anger in me bruv yeah. i had mad anger and the anger that i had in me like sometimes i'll smash out my mum's windows the car windows when she's going out and leaving us she go out on the friday night she wouldn't come back so i had this anger and i remember saying Mum, why can't you just be a normal mum and cook yeah. Sunday dinners? Rah, yeah. rah, rah. Why can't why you just are you be leaving normal? me? Yeah, why are you leaving me? So I remember that that anger was the driving force behind me. And I had such anger. If I was fighting with anyone, I'm picking any, any, anything anywhere. I'm picking it up and thinking or doing whatever at a young age, yeah. you know, in school, yeah. whatever. I'm I feel it. Dinner yeah, trays. Just, just <laughs> picking things up and smashing yeah, yeah. and smashing people and fighting at such a young age where the olders were have us fighting for hours and we were out of breath and we're just fighting. Yeah. Um, and then she'd just pick up, my mom deal was to pick up the phone and say, look, just take the little social services, etc." So I'll go into a children's home. I jump on the phone a week later, mom, please let me come back. She'd get me back in the end. But then- Was I it like in there? Was you fighting in children's homes as well? Yeah, in the children's home, fighting, this, that and the other. Yeah. But then it, it come to the point where I'm driving cars and, and motorbikes like VFR 750s. I'm like 13. Like, yeah. I, was, zzz, zzz, zzz. <laughs> I can't even hold the bike up, but yeah. the olders will put me on the bike. I'm zzz, zzz. Yeah, yeah. at the age of 13, no bash out on. I'm driving cars, sitting on pillars, yeah. and dangerous driving, failing to stop. And that's when I got my first. I was like 13. I had a 23 year old knocking my door for me when I was 12, 13. Because of how game he was. How game I was, because I was yeah, yeah. game to jump through the window, yeah. hold that in the West End with a mouthful of bags and bones. Yeah. These were the times we didn't even have no phones. Yeah. Do you understand? So it was old school. Yeah. Um, but he was taken, yeah, they're taking advantage. And, and that's how it was. The time it come 13, I got my first DTO. What's de detention and training order. So right. a prison for kids. All right. Because I was a menace. They couldn't get me into court. They couldn't get me to do an order youth offending because I'd break, I'd break, I'd break, I wouldn't turn up. Yes. Smoking so much loud and that, no one could get me there. So then in the end, they got me in the right van, took me to the Slough Magistrates, put me in the court, police at the door, standing beside me, it's a right, eight month secure unit, DTO. Yeah, yeah. And that was like my first. I've done secure units. What was it like when you went in there for the first time? For the first time, it was like, yeah. cause, cause you, you, you're being taken away from your environment. So it was yeah. not that it was scary, but it was just uncomfortable cause you're coming from the roads and with you, your so-called people. And then um, it was uh, Vinnie Green. It was, it was okay, but I was just a problem. So I was just yeah. fighting the boys from Bristol, from Manchester. I become such a problem yeah. at the Vinnie Green. After the eight month, you do four, do two. I yeah. mean, do eight, do four. Yeah. yeah. But after a month, they sent me to Kent, Medway, because oh, I was wait. a problem for Vinnie Green. So then Medway, 
they had um group four like officers yeah 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 Yeah, group four officers and i was still a problem there i'll be in the classroom i kick out the panel i piss in the corner the teacher <laughs> won't let me go to the toilet i yeah. piss in the corner yeah. kicking panels out yeah. they're saying there's no football in the canteen so then when we're walking back to our unit i'm off i'm causing riots in the place then they put me on a unit on my own with this big steroid head and just kept me on the unit that was being refurbished on my own because I was that much of a problem. Problematic. Yeah, I was problematic. So like look in the mirror, bro. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the, uh, I was going to say, did you get any visits on that? Like, Yeah, my old dear would always check for me. No matter where yeah. I was around the country, love her, she was always there for me. That's good, All man. around the country, she would obviously do the best of her ability until I got older and she just left me to it. You with me? So you do your secure unit time, then you come out of there, do you feel... All right, I've done a little bit of bird now. Now, have you got more of a chip on your shoulder? Or, you know, some people get that, you know, yeah, I've done it now. You know what I'm saying? Or Basically, it was, um, I got out. I remember the yacht worker took me home and I was like, all right, mum, I'll see you later, boom, on the estate. And they're all waiting, aren't they? Because I've been gone for a bit. So yeah, they're yeah. all like, come, come, come. They are, bill up, bill up, bill up. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and then you just you're, you're gone again you're yeah, saying yeah. you're not but then before you know it you're, you're back you're making moves yeah. instantly the next day because you're seeing people making money phones doing moves and yeah. before you knew it you're in that you're in the motor with your yeah with your belly on and stuff like that because i was i was i was do i was in the back of car like rs6s rs estates sports cars sliding on the back seats at like 13 14 with ballys on pulling up to to armed robberies and, and post offices, just sliding on the back seats at 13, 14. No way. Going in and obviously doing the, the, the draws, whether it was state agents, because they used to carry a lot of um dough back then. Obviously, everything digital now. Yeah. But there was a lot of um travel agencies, cash. foreign currency, yeah, c like live yeah. cash. And that's what, like, looking at my olders, that's what it was. I was just you taking just, you, in you the inspired to be like them. Yeah, there was one one guy saying no names. I used to look up to him. He'd have the, he'd have his Gucci uh, Gucci loafers, no socks on, all his pinstripe tailored jeans, blazers, just looking. And I think yeah, and his chaps is and all his jewelry. And I think yeah, yeah, yeah I want to be like that. Yeah. But then obviously when you get there, what was it like now, Lord, doing the arm robberies and that? Was you enjoying it? Was you like the thrill and? Yeah, because what was you doing with the peas? Like, yeah, I got yeah, at such a young age. I got a buzz from from the moves. You'd get a buzz automatically. You get buzz, and then obviously yeah. you get the 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 dough. So at a very young age, I weren't doing drugs. Yeah, I was buying food. Yeah, so I had big cheeks. Yeah, and the olders would take me shopping. So I'd go Harrods and Pabitos in West. I'd have an iceberg jean jacket and jumper, all match. Like for my age, all the other kids were all in school. Yeah. And even a little bit older than me. So I was so advanced at my age, but I had like clothes and I have money and buy bits and pieces and motorbikes and all this stuff. But then one time later on in life, I think like 13 ish year, I've, I, I was obviously making money. And one of the, one of the guys that was there in the house, they, we were this is like late 90s early 2000s when crack come on the scene yeah yeah and when crack come on the scene it was like jungle raves and and and, and garage do you understand and they're smoking crack spliff so a lot of my olders were in that scene yeah but they didn't educate me in that way and there was one Jinal's guy there mm. one time and he said here you go i'm 13 he said here you go try that mm. and i tried it and it blew my head gasket so you imagine a 13 year old kid to try that and I tried it, it blew my head gasket. So I became a slave to What did, what did it make you feel like? What like it made me feel powerful. Did it like it, it took crazy. away all my trauma. Yeah. It made me feel hard. Took away all the issues and yeah, problems. Yeah, all the issues and it made me yeah. feel hard where I didn't care. Yeah. I had that I don't give up in me. And it was stuck in me. And that was my um that was like my healing. That took yeah. away all my pain from the trauma from yeah. all that I went through, like my mum and yeah. this, that. I see my mum go jail. My mum yeah. took me and my siblings to court and thought she could um, manipulate the judge or whatever. Mm. Obviously we have these conversations now, but you wouldn't. Yeah. <laughs> but the judge sent her down. So I see my mum go to jail and they, the same court that I got sent down the first one, see my mum, see the generational thing. Yeah. So it was, um, yeah, it was deep.
it was so, so, so so you've had that now and then obviously you're getting older you're only 13 then yeah 13 so then what what goes on after this more crimes how do you get into yeah. the do you know like yeah. as you level up and progress yeah. and more do mm. you know what goes on so 13 i'm leveling up but then i go secure i go i'll go secure unit i get out but then you start doing weights and stuff yeah, so yeah. i got a little bit bigger so now i'm getting a little bit bigger mm. so now i get out i think i went then i got felton 15 the door closed what was felton like man because you know for like for me being from yeah. up north i always went to like yorkshire jails and yeah, yeah. we used to be like a bit wary to go down south like yeah. what was it like in felton back yeah. then days like so Felton, when i was i was 15 so back then i remember it was different to the secure unit because obviously security and it's all fluffy duffy obviously you had the group four but it was like an american gel do you know why because back then they had like the trays you know you put the mash yeah. in one bit you put the um protect the um the peas in there you have the like the tray with all the different departments yeah, yeah. so we go in into the, the waiting box but it was just right um right man sweat boxes were pulling up yeah one by one every 15 minutes and yeah. then we were like herds there's pure black boys getting off of the bus yeah. like that. There's obviously 5% or whatever white boys, Asian or whatever, but 95% of the population. Yeah, we were like, and it was 15, 15 to 21. So you we were mixed up then. Now there's A and B side. But then it was it was. Did you carry up. any B from the streets or like your reputation like you was had on the streets? Was it follow you into prison or? Nah, not really for me because um, my, my, my time, my era, it was more money making. Right. Don't get me wrong, I got into some nitty gritty later on. Right. But it was more, I was just in my lane. There was olders, I was taking in the information, making yeah. dough. So yeah. it was only later on in life when, so at that stage, nah, there weren't, there weren't um, much of that. Obviously, I could handle myself. Yeah. I was road, I was affiliated. So I weren't that guy to. to For someone just to come and yeah, test to, or, to have, to, or to even cause problems. Yeah, Carry yeah. yourself well in it. Yeah. And even yeah, if yeah. you did have a little tear up, you're having a tear up and then you just brush it off. And, yeah. You know what I mean? Like, whereas my generation's fucked in it yeah. compared, like, yeah, you know, yeah, there's more respect and mm. all of that. Yeah. So, yeah, so you're in Felton and then. Yeah. And then I got out from there and then back, back at it. But now I'm starting to get size. Yeah. Now I'm starting to get a bit of size. And now I'm starting to um, get a bit, yeah, making, making money getting girls and then it went on like that for quite a while then i'm out raving and then making money it started getting a bit naughty i'd say around 17 18 yeah because that's when um so i'm making money throughout them years nothing just making money spending money jail remand this that and the other but then it shifted when i was like 17 18 i got with a, a girl and she stood by me when I went jail. And when I went jail, she was there for me. So then obviously got out A, B and C and she said she's pregnant. I said, go to the doctors and let me What'd you go to jail for this time? This was, um, it was nothing serious. I think it might've been like a like commercial burglary with laptops because Slough Man back then, we were all to do with like um, sun servers, hard drives, laptops. Like we were specialists mm. within this field. So you go out on a on a, a morning run, and because yeah. before like laptops are now, I'm talking back in the back day, in the day yeah. business people have them. Yeah. So you get a grand, a couple of grand a machine. This is before Pentium. We're talking four eight sixes, five eight sixes. Do you understand? Yeah. Way back when. So then we go, <laughs> up, we get we get yeah. these these drives and just do offices and A B and C. Yeah. So at that at that time, we was just making money, and then things changed and shifted when um she was waiting for you when you went to jail you said yeah she was waiting for me when i went to yeah. jail and then um i got out of jail and i thought i'm gonna hold it down now so i got a little job and i had a line i was moving bits and pieces on the line but then i had um i was going to work for the mars factory so i was yeah. trying to hold it down trying to do something and then all of a sudden summertime she's called my phone and she said oh she worked in the bookies yeah I can't remember what it's Carol's or something. She was working in the bookies, but I didn't even think to, to do that because it's shitting on your own doorstep and all yeah. that. Do you know what I mean? So I didn't even think. I was just leaving her to it. I didn't even comprehend doing that. Yeah. Anyway, she rung me and she said, oh, so, someone's ro robbed the bookies. Yeah. yeah. Where she was working. Yeah. And straight away, I knew. 
straight away, I was like, what? What do you mean? What yeah. do you mean you, they've robbed the book? So then when she come, I, I, I questioned her. What were they wearing? How were they moving A, B, and C? She weren't letting off anything. But she said, oh, she was with her friend. And her friend, brother, was like my kind of pal. We grew up together. We grew up together where we would... Um, like mums would borrow milk, etc., sleepovers yeah, and all that. Yeah, yeah. So anyway, they're going out, they're going out clubbing that night, and they said, "Oh, why don't you go with them?" So I went with them. They're all popping champagne. They're the ones that licked it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You but got the girl was involved. Yeah, my my girl, my yeah, girl yeah. was involved. <laughs> huh? Huh? Eve. Yeah. I know, but I didn't know. It's only in the morning when I come back and I'm asleep. Yeah. She's coming. She's told me, and then I've gone off my rocker. Yeah. Because I'm that guy. I've got her. Gone to the house, with obviously telling my man A, B, and C want this dough, and he could have went and licked the move on his own. He never went and licked the move on his own because he knew if it come on top, if there's an inside job, you only have to walk. You, you got more peace. Oh, so they went to use you if it come on top. Or have you no, like? He knew I could. If someone come and give me an inside job, I just go and if I could take the candy there, take the candy. It's more candy for me. Yeah. Yeah. I'm only gonna call someone else if I think if it comes on top. Yeah, I need backup. Yeah, because it's not normal civilians. He's he's do, he's doing a naughty one. Yeah. So he's called someone else, and then they ended up f like four man going to do. Yeah. This one little thing inside job. Yeah. But I believe it's obviously because if it come on top A, B, and C, but next minute yeah. it did come on top. Now it's me having to deal with four man. Yeah. And they weren't obviously idiots. And then I'm I'm there fighting. Well, well things are going on with there. So I've demanded though. One of them's give me it. The one that was the naughty one that set it up in the first place and called thingy. And then the other guy, um, I'm demanding dough. I got a, like a, a shank out and I'm demanding, I'm scraping up on the wall. I got a bottle of Hennessy. I'm on a mad one. I'm scraping up against the wall saying A, B and C. There's people there and they're obviously looking at him saying, boy, you better do something because like, yeah. thingy. Nothing happened then. He called me the next day, said, where are you? And bring my man's dough. So I've pulled up on the Wentworth in my car, I had a sword down my leg. I'm walking with a sword. He's come round the corner with four next heads. I had to give it some legs. I give it some legs and I fall over the wall trying to get to my car and he's come with a sword. One of them's come with a sword and chopped me in my leg. Yeah, I've seen the scars, yeah. And yeah. then I've, I've, I've managed to get back up, get into my car, vroom, 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 and um, I've, I got away. Someone called me and told me, come. I've come there, they're all sitting on the wall. And I was emotional, like 80 and I'm crying. My missus is, Ginals me. These yeah. people are supposed to be my people. I was emotional. I was just thinking like that. And yeah. I, I just this, is the, this is where the switch is flipping now. Yeah, yeah. My head's yeah. flipping now. And then, yeah. and then I've, I've just left them to it. A couple of weeks later, I've driven to their local where they're moving food and that from. I've gone in there. Yeah. I've got a taxi. Gone in there on my own. I'm a one-man soldier. I've always been, yeah? Gone in there and I've got, got them a drink. I want a drink, yeah? Buy them a drink. They're looking out the window thinking, what am I on? Do you understand? thinking what's, what's going on. Anyway, I left there. A couple of days later, I'm in this other um, like bar, snooker bar, and someone said, yeah, them man are coming. I said, okay. Went to go to the toilet, I put my hand in my pocket, there's a butterfly knife. I thought, what? Someone must have dipped it, put it in my pocket. Anyway, long story short, they've come in, two of them's come in, and there's two of them that's come in, two white guys come in with the guys that I had it with, and one of them, I'm playing pool, 50 pound or whatever it was. I've turned around, they've moved the ball. When they've moved the ball, he's, they're trying to mug me off now, this guy, because I've got this thing with him. So anyway, I've blew out his face. I had like a keeper ring, some ring on, blew out his face. I got the thing in there and I thought I might as well kill two birds with one stone now. And I flicked out the thing. I opened my man's boat and then I'm running around the car park and the pub like a bit of a madman. I sent my girl off in a taxi because she got heart hurt in the... The same one who hit the thing. Yeah, the, yeah, the graph, yeah, yeah. She went hospital. My mum's gone hospital to see... If um with her, yeah, their man are at the hospital. My mum's at the hospital. Mm. They've got jumped on the phone and got my mum's house lit up. And now, so they went to the hospital and got and went to your mum. No, no, they've gone to the hospital because his face is okay, open. okay, okay. Yeah, yeah. My girl's in the hospital as well because she got thingied in the commotion. Yeah. So they're in the hospital. My mum's there with her. They're there as well. So then they've jumped on the thing. And got my yard lit up. All right. You Knowing me? that your mum's not there though. Yeah, that she was in the hospital. Yeah, yeah. Whether they did or not, it don't really matter. Yeah. Now I knew where my man's mum lived, but I'm a little bit different from the rest. Do you understand? Now, I was battling with my man in my own head. Yeah, and I, I've got a little bit of more 
that I didn't go there. I was getting, my man was telling me stories to play out. Do you understand? All kinds of things. But I never felt through with that because I'm, I've always been hot. Do you understand? Yeah. Even when I've been on the road, I've always been hot. I've never been sneaky. Sometimes I'm doing moves. I'll do it bare face because I don't yeah. like sneakiness. Yeah. Do you understand? You're not scared of the you know, I'm not scared. I'm, yeah. I, I, I'm, I'm not my eyes truth. Yeah. I, yeah. I'd rather, don't get me wrong, if I'm doing certain things, but sometimes I just don't like that sneakiness. Yeah. You know, just the realness within yeah. you. Yeah. And so that's what I never went to his yeah. mum's house, but then I, do, I did get one of them things. And now I'm driving, thinking I'm a gangster. Big. BMW M3 with still matic on. Woke up this morning, bought yeah. myself a gun. Yeah, yeah, you know yeah. when you're in that 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 so, mindset in yeah. that world. So now I'm driving. I'm in that world right now. Yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm playing the tune. I'm thinking the neck. I see them in the car. They're reversing up mm. the up the up the um lily up into the wall. They know stuff's going on. But even when I'm going to get the strap off someone, they're yeah. telling me, "Raw, my man's actually come and got one himself." Yeah. Do you understand? So do you know in them places sneaky. in that world, everyone's sneaky, yeah. everyone's hotting everyone up. Yeah. So that's the nature of it. When I've gone, he said, boy, do you know my man's come and got A, B and C? I was like, cool. So this is going on. I've got five heads on me and now I'm taking drugs. I'm high. I'm not even thinking about getting them back. My head gaskets popped. So then that's happened. And now um, one of the... So you never bumped into him that day where you're driving around with a nah, thing? Nah, nah, no, I did, but then obviously it didn't mm. come to part like that. Yeah. Then the next time I'm driving, I got nothing on me. I got a driver. Yeah. My driver's driving me and we're driving past. Like I'm, I'm in my passenger seat like this. Yeah. But we've come past and they've seen me. And yeah. now they've come past, they've seen me. I'm telling my guy to drive, but he don't even know the bits like that. So as he's driving... He's trying to get away, he ain't getting away, but anyway, he's crashed on the roundabout, final road roundabout, <laughs> crashed. I've jumped out, I've run over to the petrol station, four court. I've got obviously a, a, a bag of man, a full car on me. I'm running, running, I jumped, get into the car. As I get into the car, someone else's car on the four court, they've jumped out with their keys and run off, and then in the end, I'm fighting on the four court. Yeah? And then, How many man you got on you? There's like five man. Wow, well, have you got weapons or what's what's? No, I ain't even got nothing. My what, things. Them? The, have they got weapons? I can't even remember. Yeah, I, I I got KO'd. I was I woke up in the hospital with tire marks, on my on my. You got run over. Yeah, they reversed over me. Wow. Like I've got a little like content now a podcast with my man because obviously I forgive. I'm on a different frequency. We get that later on, but my man's reversed. East, my man said, "Yeah, reverse over him." They reversed over me, so I had tire marks on my back. And also my face all scraped up from the exhaust or whatever it is. And then I, obviously I woke up in hospital. Bro, you're yeah. blessed in it to still have. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This is, this is only a bit of the madness, man. Yeah, yeah of course. <laughs> Yo. Yeah, exactly. You're blessed, that. man. So that was that scene. So yeah. I didn't stay in hospital long because I'm one of them soldiers, you know, just discharge, yeah. gone. Gone. Boom. So I've discharged myself from the hospital. And then the same guy that had them sitting on the wall. Mm. Said, nah, 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 this is thingy now because you you're a one man soldier. They're coming to your own teams. Rah, rah, rah. So he's got my man, got him. We sat down in a pub. He said to them, right, you got to pay this amount of dough to me for lighting up my mum's yard, A, B, and C. So as far as I was concerned, they were like, yeah, yeah, yeah. But my man obviously never had no ratings because if he had ratings, they would have paid the dough and A, B, and C. So that didn't happen. So I've gone to REM's uh, dispatchment thing. I didn't have no tool on me because obviously it was supposed to be done, but I probably did, but it was around the corner or whatever, but I didn't have one, nothing live on me. My man's in there. And then I ended up, uh, we were outside, something happens. And then he snaked me in my head and chopped me in the head with a machete. No way. So so basically it tried, some guys come saying, look, pay yeah, my man. Squashed. Yeah, yeah, kind but, of But, but he, yeah. he had no pull, so they wouldn't pay the door. They weren't really listening to no, him. But they, no, they were, they were listening. Yeah. They were listening and it was all set to thing. But obviously where we was in the shubs mm. and the people are drinking and he's in there, he's got a wet on his face. I'm fresh. I've got mm. nothing wrong he's with hurt. me. He's hurting because there's yeah. girls, a thing, he's, he's, he's holding face. Mm. So then he's he's ching me. So he walks in the club and he just boom. Yeah, out, outside the club and got me in my head, fractured skull, bleeding to the brain. And then... um. How long ago is this after the t getting run over with the tyre and all that? Is this not long apart? 
maybe a couple maybe a month or something weeks oh, so you're just taking in these do you understand <laughs> yeah 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 and um yeah so that that was that um because you got to understand they're coming to me in the team yeah i'm on i i was on my and i'm not a man to jump on the phone they know they can't approach you with more with, with less than with less than a team because of what you're capable of doing because you yeah, but it's always been like that. Not wired up. Yeah, I'm not wired up like that. And that's, yeah. it's always been like that. Even decades yeah. later, one man wouldn't come to me on their own. Yeah. Because I was fearless. I was, my head gasket was popped. I didn't care about my own life, let alone anyone else. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? I can relate. I'll give people's tools themselves. I'll say, yeah. Yeah. Chop me then. Do you understand? Yeah. I, I didn't care. I remember you told me the one where the, where they pulled up with the thing and, and you came out. And you, you got in the car and told them to drive. Yeah, so... They get to that, though, innit? Yeah, 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 we'll get that. to that. <laughs> so that, basically, that happened. Yeah. Um. That happened there. And then I think people got banged up. I got banged up and got, like, a four years. Mm. He ended up getting banged up for something else because he had something with someone else. They got him nicked. He got a seven or something. And then he got dipped after so it kind of fizz it kind of fizzled out and then i it kind of like fizzled out because he got thingy to jamaica i had to swallow my pride certain thing and just cracked on with things and yeah. then um because it was either life or death and then uh yeah and then i started this you do the jail so you get the jail um how what sentence did you get when you yeah, went in i got i'd got a, i got a four yeah done my two and then come out fresh but i had a limp still yeah. So even before I got the, the, the sentence, I was doing mad moves. Yeah. And then there's description in the paper, two men balaclavered, one with a limp. Yeah. Because I was out doing naughtiness whilst I was still flicking out my leg. Yeah. And that was going on for some, some time. And then obviously I got out of prison again. And then... Where's your mindset at now when you get out of this one? I got... Because there was no one there for me. Yeah, I had that I don't give in me. So anyone that was moving food or anyone that was doing anything i was just yamming them yeah. i had no friends do you understand because in your mind you had yeah no in friends. my mind i had yeah, no friends just you. when i was laying in the hospital bed half dead yeah and the surgeon's telling me that i'm not gonna walk again the only ones there were the ones that care that's when life gives you a slap in the face to bring reality to truly that that life because we live in this world of that culture and the wannabe gangster as young people young men older men but then you can go through your life thinking that's real until shit hits the fan and you look around and there's not even one man. Yeah. And that's when life slaps you in the face and wakes you up and you actually realise and think, wow. Mm. So then your perspective on life changes. Yeah. So then your attitude and your outlook on people around you shifts because yeah. you're not my peoples. Yeah. I ain't got no peoples. Yeah. So then your decisions and choices started changing. I just started eating people. Yeah. Like olders that used to violate me and stuff like that. I'll be in the house, he's counting up his dough, thinking he's a daddy, counting up bags there, man them around. And then I'm thinking, what? And he must have catch up on my vibration. He must have catch it up. And then he's bagged it up like that and gone, oh, I look after that. I'll grab it in thin air. Bam. I didn't even go out the front though. I went upstairs and tied that stuff down my leg. Yeah. And come down the stairs. Whoever wants it, follow me out the door. So I just started just going on the military, eating everyone. I go and sell people goods, like loads of laptops. Sell them the laptops. I ask them to call me a taxi and take the laptops and the dough. Do you understand? Yeah. Just just going on ruthless. Just going on this like I didn't care. I didn't care about my own life because I knew it wasn't me. I knew I was destroying myself and everyone around me. So this darkness, this trauma was the driving force to me. Yeah. I don't give a f because yeah. I had no love. Yeah, it's me like me against the world, you yeah. against the world, and it yeah. sounds like fuck everyone. You get yeah, me? exactly that. And that was the driving force. And then I'm just turning on people that I grew up with, people that would give me some dough for to get a dotty, because obviously I didn't have no dough because I was just on a mad one and give me dough, and then I'm turning on them. I, I switched and turned on a lot of people, even certain people. Not that they were there for me, because they weren't even there for themselves. The life's that dark. But yeah. people that were kind of like people that I grew up with. Maybe you shouldn't. May, maybe do you know like? Do you think like drugs played a part in yeah, turning on did. some people? Of course it did. A big major part on a lot of things. I did like hurt a lot of people and do some real scummy sh stuff. Yeah, but 
when you're often, in that world yeah when you're in that world it's like that obviously later on when i come into a new world i try to reconcile to the some of the people that i did affect but at the time my heart was hardened i was desensitized i didn't care about my own life let alone anyone else i didn't care if i died i wanted to die because the life that i was living wasn't a life worth living so that's how deep it was i didn't even want to live so i didn't want to live i'm going all out wow, all out so what what about like what what brings you calms you down or like where do you get to a point where you know what i'm saying yeah along so, your journey so like basically along the journey i left my baby mums because obviously that was just toxic that that hurt that disloyal and all that this thing and then i i got with my my missus my my girl at the time and she was a mover and shaker yeah she made big dough and um like big dough you wouldn't catch no other woman like her doing what she was doing she was she was like a wag yeah gucci store lettos handbag matching um pulling up in big and she was a bit of attraction so there was um she would obviously be moving a lot of stuff about she was living nice and um she was yeah a lot of lot of man were like on her do you understand and i kind of and she was lovely she'd always look after everyone do you understand but i kind of come in and like um like saved her and kind of yeah. captured her to this like a protection thing, like yeah, we, because it, like that, you've already been showing all these people love. Yeah. You already know how yeah. fake these how it, how, it, yeah. how it goes down. Yeah. You can see her being taken advantage of. Yes. So you came in and yeah, people were taking advantage, and I yeah. kind of come in to say, now nah, they're taking a piss A, B, and C. But me and her have got our own trauma. She grew up seeing the same stuff that I grew up. So I come out of my world going beep 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 beep. Yeah. Law of attraction. Bam. I've I've attracted my mum. She's attracted her dad. Yeah. So it was it was chaotic at the beginning. I go jail, still in that world. I'm trying to get her out of that world, away from them locations, because they're hyenas. No one was thingy me anyway. So if you got your pearls or thingy there, they want to come and take your pearls. So there was a lot of fuckeries, should I say, with that. Because I'm trying to take her. They're trying to koala her ahead. But then later on, God always prevails anyway. You with me? But yeah. at the time, there was deep battles yeah. going on deep darkness whether and then i'm going to jail i'm getting out thinking what are you nuts boom and then getting strapped gun biting people and having domestics with her and then she's at me i'm out in her people going it was it was like bon you're um, just a mad man bobby thing. and whitney yeah, yeah that's what it was yeah like bobby and whitney like on some next level arm oh, please licking out my windows in the car dragging me out tasering me me going on remand for domestic her coming up dropping charges i'll get out again back on the roads i say oh, i'm not gonna do that i'm not gonna shot that i'm gonna get some green hold it down in the gym but then get back in it she's got her insecurities i'm not coming home so then she's running up thing i'm in clubs she's booting off toilet doors for me like we were just like true love man yeah it was, it, it was deep if that's what yeah. you call it it was deep <laughs> traumatic love but yeah it was deep yeah. makeup breakup cycle yeah but the one thing it was it was like she knew that i had goodness within me yeah that no one else could really see yeah. and i knew that she had goodness so we were like i was nurturing her to protect her like yeah. a, like a father and to protect herself and then she was nurturing me giving me that kind of mother's love and yeah. being there and that's what um yeah we were i was selling drugs she's doing her bits and pieces people come into the yard because they wanted me they wanted my energy because i've yeah. always that's i've always that's charisma yeah i've always had character i've always been a joker yeah. and always, i've always been good peoples yeah do you understand so people want to steal your energy people know that as well they see yeah. that though they're like they see they're, they're not really bothered about money or materialistic things with you it's just what you bring as as you being a person and that's, yeah. that's well, what i never want. even had that back then because yeah. i might have had garms and looked flashy but yeah. i didn't have much dough around me like that yeah but it didn't matter because of who you was who i was yeah yeah in the making it's what they might not even consciously known their self but that darkness inside them yeah. knew that there was light inside me and goodness so yeah. it's beyond their comprehension yeah. you with me and that's what it was so then you imagine me and my missus coming together like two shooting stars colliding the big bang yeah. i'm not talking fury do you hear me <laughs> <laughs> yeah so them everyone's trying to split us up everyone's yeah. trying to break us up yeah but obviously it didn't happen and then 
the last the last time there's people coming up in the yards with, with dotties and then i'm walking out the yard with them into the field and saying what are you doing but they just wanted to, for them to for around the estate oh yeah people having a go just because yeah, who you yeah, are to try and it. steal my stripes yeah but i never got them overnight a lot of prison cells bloodshed and tears yeah hospital beds handcuffed effects but yeah that was that was the um yeah, that was that's that's what it was for for many. And people years. are running up in the yard with dotties. Yeah, yeah, you, you no fear, still no. no Even I, as you get as you get older, did you not get that little bit of like wariness in you? Or like sometimes I feel as you get older, you get a bit like, oh, did that not happen to you? No, like you just until, until kept I was that. ready to to die to cross over, I just had that I don't give a yeah. Me. So when they're coming in, I'm walking out the house and going into the field. Saying what are you doing? I'm dropping bare dough out of my pockets as I'm walking up the road because I had tracks with bottles, dough dropping out. And the youths are saying, Oh, you're dropping dough. I said, Fuck the dough. What are you on about? Yeah. Dough? I think because I didn't care. I'm I'm I want to get to the point. Like, what you think you can come and steal my stripes? So when I'm in the field, I'm chatting to them with a the dotty in the field. Yeah. I've come out of the house and I'm I'm chanting, saying, What are you playing at? Yeah? You ain't even been jailed before at these times. I'm saying you ain't yeah. even been jailed before and you think come and steal my stripes. Yeah. You understand? So then cause that's where you get out of jail and there's young bucks that are coming up on the scene yeah and then um never ending man yeah and then there was another time as well we're at the off license you know the ones that are open at like three in the morning yeah and then i see two girls that i know their fella but they're with two other guys i'm not into them shit there you with me yeah it's not even my business but when it touches touches something in there also two girls are with two other guys but you know they're so it's like your boys your, your yeah, boys, girls with my, another they're guy. They're not even my boys, but I just know their fella. Yeah. And I've got a little love for the fella because I went to school, like primary school and certain stuff. Mm. Yeah. But I see I see them and it, it evokes something in me. So I give the guy, I say, what are you doing with them? And I give him a little slap or something. I think I might have had a bore. I slapped him with a bore in the car. <laughs> and then I done that. And then we've gone to my girl's house and we're all doing what we're doing. We're drinking, all that party and stuff. And she was with her, her pal and her pal's boyfriend was there his brother from Birmingham anyway next minute the door's knocking there's a bag of man outside my guy from Birmingham's decamped over the back over our back the back fence so I'm in the the, the, the yard now and I've gone into the kitchen I grabbed a uh, like a kitchen knife put it down my back but it must have been poking out so as I've walked out of the the, the yard their car's there but I've gone out and I've, uh, uh, they're obviously surrounded by a man, but one of them, where I'm obviously a bit buzzing as well, one of them slipped the, the thing out of my back because it was yeah. sticking out. So now I'm, I'm, I'm not holding anything. So then I've jumped in the, um, I've jumped in the back of the key, jumped in the back of the car and said, come. Back of their car? Yeah, back of their car. I jumped in the back of their car and I said, come. Yeah. Like, come on, let's, let's go from here. Yeah. You understand? Because it's obviously a girl. Imagine if you girl your mum's yard. Yeah. This, so I've, I've jumped in the back and I've said, come. And then we've driven off. And now we're obviously having conversations. We're talking. It probably would have got messy. It would have got sticky. Yeah. Maybe like sticky for me. Yeah? yeah. But I had that. I don't give in me. Yeah. When armed police have skidded up about five minutes later. No way. And then we've all decamped from the car, all tools getting left in the car, whatever. I didn't. Obviously, we got away. So... That was that to that one, but so you I was you was careless, ruthless. Yeah. You get me, like you jumping in their car, come then let's go. Yeah. Like I don't think there's any men out there. Most yeah. men are not doing that. You get me? Yeah. Like mad, like I your, think, fo I your think... thought process must have been yeah, just lost in it. Like wow, like yeah, I didn't I didn't care about my own life. I didn't care because I knew it wasn't me, and yeah. I'd rather be dead than live in that life of drugs and in that world and A, yeah. B, and C, where a lot of people were wary because they knew that I didn't. I had that I don't in me. Yeah. That's why they definitely obviously come with a bagger man. Yeah. You understand? And even certain man, because I've reconciled with them now. Because yeah. we were we were young at the time, 18, 19, 20. Yeah. And you got music that's fueling it, 50 cent at the time. Man, yeah. man. Do you understand? Yeah. So yeah. we're thinking we're gangsters and all that. We're older now, but I've reconciled with a lot of them. Speak to them, not speak to them like power, power like that. But when you look back, it's absolutely madness. Yeah. It's chaotic madness everyone looking over nothing really yeah, like over nothing. Not, not nothing really mm. you know what i'm saying yeah yeah all stems totally. from so much so much so small it comes into lifelong beef where people could have lost their lives you know what i'm saying yeah. injured running or getting run over and all that madness yeah of course how does the change come how does like you know when you start to feel like you know 
I've had enough, like completely yeah. kind of, you go onto the, the righteous yeah. path. Of so all that was happening. And then 2012, now I'm taking drugs and I'm just, just doing What about your siblings? You have any siblings? Yeah, I had a, a, a brother commit, yeah. uh, commit a suicide, psychosis, green. Yeah. My sister obviously just works, is doing her stuff. And my other sister, they just obviously do their thing. They never yeah. went into that world. What was it like losing your brother? It was, um, I'll be real with you. Whether it's because I've spiritually evolved and I know nothing really matters because yeah. I've evolved spiritually. Yeah. Or whether it's I'm desensitized, yeah. but it's just another layer over the other side of the veil. So I found it hard to even. He left my place because I was trying to save him, trying to heal him, trying to do some work, but the enemy got a upper hand. So I found it hard to shed a tear. Now, whether that is desensitized or whether because I've evolved spiritually, but it was more hard for the the loved ones to go through that experience and see them, if you're with me. Yeah. I don't know, that's, that's, it, it was, that's how it's been for, for me when death's been knocking at my door close to me. It's been yeah. hard to. Oh, everything you've gone through has kept yeah. you strong, bro. It's yeah. Like, you see deeper in it, you see more, you yeah. see into things too deep. It's yeah. like, I feel, this, I can relate, you get me? And when people start crying and doing all that nonsense, I think to myself, and then every year their, their anniversary, I, it's like playing the victim and, start doing all that stuff. Yeah. Like I'm, my mindset's a little bit different to the rest. Are you with me? Yeah. Because we all got to cross over. So every year or every few months, we're going to be crying every five minutes. Yeah, you're you right, bro. And you know what? Yeah. Even me listening to that, like I, I used to, I've got a mate who passed away in it. And every year I, I get, like it's only been a couple of years, but I've been getting the people together. Yeah, yeah. And I fought in it because I was sports you before in there. Yeah, and yeah, I yeah. project. And when he said that to me, I thought, you know what? You're right, man. Like, do you know yeah. what I'm saying? You put something into me, they're like, yeah. yeah. Forget it in it because now I've I've kind of evolved and I believe the yeah. same in it about death. Like, it's deep. unless you're having celebrations, yeah, none of that negative energy on it, yeah, because then you're reinforcing the negative energy of his life and whatever. Unless there's positive vibes, you're having Party. a celebration, having positive vibes of remembrance. Oh, it's cool, then we can still get messy <laughs> every year. Then you're, then, then you're doing, then you're doing yeah, that yeah. at my funeral. My mum, me, and my sisters and my peoples, we wore light colors and. We were celebrating his life. We didn't yeah. go into that mundane program. Are you with me? So that did that not help promote the change? Like so, as you so then, what was it for you? So back the, to the point. The change was obviously I was having it with a missus. Domestic. I'm out doing drugs, A, B, and C. I'm in a hotel with prostitutes, sniffing cocaine. No one will come near me, not even for a session or anything or to party because I was a liability. I was tapped. Are you with me? Yeah. I'll get people putting their blows in the bag and turn them off and <laughs> doing all kinds of crazy stuff. Yeah. So my head gaskets off. No one will come party with me. So I'm in the hotel. I'm laughing because I can't relate. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I'm with loads of prostitutes and I'm yeah. doing the drugs, drinking. And then I woke up in the morning Yeah. and I was crying like a baby. I was crying like, um, but I'm obviously 27. I'm crying sobbing like a baby. And um, I went out and just got myself nicked like, not consciously, but subconsciously, I just started going licking moves. Licking moves, yeah. balaclava run, no yeah. getaway car, no, no, um, no, um, nothing, just going in, demanding money, and then walking out, walking up the road, asking for triple brandy and coke in the pub, and getting a taxi, and just doing a mad one, knowing that if I get nicked, I'm going safe haven, prison my safe haven, you go to gym, eat food, get healthy, that was my safe haven. If not, I'll get away with a dough and carry on on the madness for a little while. So. I got nicked after a couple of other things happened. And then when I got nicked, I went to the prison. And throughout my prison sentences, I, I've gone to the chapel, doing alpha course. I've done, um, I've gone to the mosque, doing wudu, bismillah. Yeah. I've gone to the library. Yeah. I've, I've been in search, every Researching, religion, everything. Yeah, you yeah. try to find that. And in the end, at 2012, I prayed out to the Lord and Savior Jesus. And, um, I went to sleep that night and I was vibrating. This is in my prison cell. Vibrating from head to toe with pure light. The only feeling that I can explain is Mandy, ease. But I'm in a cell, I'm sober, there's no drugs. Yeah, from head to toe, pure light vibrating through my body. And the next day, I just felt different. 
was watching Hollyoaks or EastEnders. They weren't Love Island back there. It was probably Hollyoaks or EastEnders. So I'm watching TV in the afternoon. And I thought, what's this nonsense that I'm watching? I unplug the TV. I put it by the door. In the morning, I give it to the officers. Now I'm meditating, doing breathing, meditating, reading the word of God. And they do this roll check 645. I'm the happiest guy in the jail. They're thinking, this guy's off his rocker. He's got no TV. He's riding voluntary. But I'm just happy. I've become spiritually and psychologically free. I started telling him, man, come away from me, bruv. Yeah. Come away from me. If no one was, I was safeguarding my mind. I realized that I became conscious that my past didn't define me and that I could create a new me through the power of my thoughts, feelings, and emotions. Obviously, the word of God, but the secret helped me when it defined about your feelings. So now I become conscious. I'm not creating no negative feelings. I'm only creating positive feelings. Now I'm attracting certain things within my prison, within the prison, opportunities. I'll give you one story, because obviously time and all that. I've written my missus number down in the um, morning. I've gone to the phone. Yep, yeah, all right, babe, all right then. Yeah, yeah, have a good day. All right, love you, bye. Put the bit of paper, scrap bit of paper in my pocket. I've gone to um, education. I'm speaking to the youths in there. Guys come up to me and said, oh, I've got something for you. I said, all right, cool. He goes, come and see me after in the library. I've gone to see him. He's given me a book, a number seven on it. You see the numbers there, seven, right? Yeah. And I was like, raw. I said, nice one, bruv. I was telling him about synchronicity, signs, and all that stuff. And he's looking at me thinking, this guy's off his rocker. The officers are thinking, he, was, he's, he needs to go block. Healthcare. So anyway, I've got the book. <laughs> I'm looking and I'm thinking, right, I've cool gone back to my, my, my cell. I yeah. mean, the, the classroom. Yeah, yeah. And I'm looking, I said, seven spiritual laws of superhero. I thought, I swear I'll ask my missus to order me this book. Deepak Chopra. Oh, my days. I asked my missus two weeks ago to order me this book. <gasps> Where is it? It's written down in my cell. Right. <gasps> bit of paper that I wrote a number down that morning the seven spiritual laws um, superheroes Deepak Chopra the guys come the strangers come and give me the book now I'm starting to create things now I'm getting visions of my legal visit I'm in room seven and the, the barrister's gonna come and give me some good news the next day I'm walking singing along I'm getting visions creating things and then bing bang bong your the positive patient. mindset is creating your new future. Yeah, yeah. the conscious, the consciousness. Yeah. Being and aware, yeah. you can see, you can look at people and you can just know, yes. you feel come it. Come away from them. Yeah, come away from them. He's yeah. all right, he's good stuff, yeah. she's good and stuff. Words, and words, words become very powerful things, do you yeah. think? Like, things yeah, people course. say. Yep. Yeah. So that's what happened. It's like my, my heart become activated. Yeah. And once it become activated, that was the language that it understood. So yeah. basically, I could pick up on your information from your heart. Yeah. Do you understand? So if it's yeah. good stuff, I'm thinking if it's not, and it would be, I wouldn't even need to listen to, to words. Yeah. I can just feel. feel yeah. Do you understand? And that's how yeah, deep it yeah. was. And then one more before with the synchronicities, I'm a, I, I was high risk. So I couldn't go home. So I had to go to approved premises, hostel, sign on every three hours. So now I've got a job anyway. Long story short, I've got my cocoa butter. I come home from work, creaming my skin, and the co cocoa butter's like, um, it's dead. It's literally done now. And I thought to myself, oh, I need to get a new cocoa bar. My door's knocked. And I didn't have it with anyone in the hostel like that. And the guy goes, Dwayne. I said, yo. He goes, I've opened the door. I goes, yo. He goes, do you use cocoa butter? I said, yeah, why? He goes, here, you can have that. Brand new cocoa butter. I, I said, nice one, bruv. I shut the door and I'm having the conversations with myself. Best conversations you can have with yourself. And as I'm there with the cocoa butter, having a conversation <laughs> with myself and then he's yeah. gone here I go here Dwayne here you go open the door he's giving me another one I've got two cocoa butters there full cocoa butters and this empty one that I thought to myself I need to get a new one meditation become my drug I was yeah. meditating lunchtime if I'm at work all the laborers or whatever I'm taking myself away I'm going to meditate hide myself in the cupboard I'll go and meditate and I started just picking up on the patterns of the universal laws and then life started unfolding for me like that wow mm. yeah i can relate to all of that man mm. even like me when i meditate it's the same thing in it like kind of but we'll get into that in it when i chat to you anyway but yeah. anything anything else doing like that you could leave a positive message here you know for obviously like, yeah for any of the young generation like a lot of my people that follow me and listen to me yeah. they're all young um, not all young but you know majority yeah, and course. 
with you being through all them traumas and experiences yeah, yeah. really on the road you know what i'm saying madman drugs all these things that you went through to come on a positive path to make a change like what message could you give to so the, to me- the people, message man? is right i was road affiliated i make road man look like family man and <laughs> it didn't serve me it was pain misery jail for myself and others the minute i made that choice and that decision that i'm not having it and getting to know my true self and being me that's when life started serving me yeah and in this world if you want good things and to feel good and have a good life you can't cross the line because there's universal laws and the minute you break the law you might be able to 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 black man yeah or get away with a b and c with man but you can't get away from this intelligence this in between us inside us that gives everything life and it governs the earth and and the people on the earth so if you think you're going to make it on the roads or doing crime you're not it's just a matter of time yeah. and if you can what you put out you get back shaken and stirred yeah. and i've never been happier and um felt better within my life because life is i'm serving life and life is serving me and it's having a relationship the one bit of information i'll say is get to know yourself, build a relationship with yourself, spend time with yourself, speak positive stuff over yourself, yeah. put one foot in front of the other to become a better person and treat others how you'd like to be treated. And if you're selling drugs to someone, then that's not, if you're robbing, stealing, it doesn't matter. Karma's matter. real, innit? You get me? Yeah, it's gonna that's come back. Saying it, like you mm. put whatever you put out, you get back. Yeah, that's 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 the one law. The more good, the more good you put in yeah. the universe, the more good you get back. Yeah, and so, the roads are dead. Yeah. It's an illusion, it's a lie. 100% bro I feel like this is why I've come across you as a person you get mm. me like to meet you and I've learned from you quite a lot you get me yeah, yeah. I appreciate what I've learned and when I listen to you it's inspiring you get me yeah very powerful speaker bro and just a quick one because we missed we missed it yeah I got into I got out of jail and I had no education I left school at, pri- at primary school yeah yeah no education I managed to get go into Fulton create a company a prison get keys to the jail get contracts from the jail and build a team, build companies. And I ain't got no education. You can do what you want. If you believe you can achieve. And I was able to go into a jail, get keys to the jail after being out of jail for two years. And I was one of the first people to be charged with a mobile phone in the UK in 2010 and for it to go out and get more time. Yeah, and I managed to get into the jail, get contracts with DWP and some of these institutions to try and empower the people for positive change. Because now my life is dedicated to the people to show that if I can do it, you can do it. You got greatness within you and you can do anything you want. There's too many products in the world to sell to go to a product that the minority use that's killing everyone. There's too much opportunity, especially in the West, that we have. So grab it by two hands before it slips it slips out of your hand and what, what what are you doing now like what's your what you want yeah, with yeah. now like so now main we, focus yeah now I'm a, a mastermind mentor yeah motivational speaker so I have high-end ticket clients for people that are struggling even road man that may obviously have a bit of capital around them that are struggling want to get out of that world but high-end ticket clients that I'm able to show how to tap into their self become their best version and um Obviously, we've got the companies that work with like exploitation, trying to help the young boys not get groomed and exploited and start moving food and going in jail and doing the same as what we did. And then the girls, my missus takes care of the girls that are being groomed, exploited into that world because you won't win. So we want to try and prevent the young people because we was in Fulton working with like Digger D, Dig That, SJ, a lot of the rappers within the UK. We done some good work with them, but then we thought to us, have we got to get in the community prevention rather than cure? So that's what our company Road Light, Seven Road Light. Um, wow. Yeah. What's that company? Road Light or yeah. Seven Road Light. So from the roads to the light. Yeah, yeah. man, you're smashing it, bro. You're doing like yeah. great things in it. Like, I'm inspired. That's I'm, I'm so quiet because you know nothing for me to say. I'm getting inspired myself yeah. by listening. You know what I'm saying? Thank you. Yeah, it's great, man. It's like and giving back to the community is always like real good as well in it i feel of like course. when you get on that journey on that path like always try to give back and do well in yeah. the community in it totally 100 percent. it's all about it's all about giving i feel like the young minds obviously like like you say it's like a sponge in it so whatever we can 
put in there is goodness and positive. Yeah. Like they can absorb that and hopefully learn from my your experience. Yeah. Get me from watching this. Yeah. It's deep, man. Mm. And obviously, I'm gonna get the documentary done with the Wayne too. Yeah, coming soon, man. Don't watch that. But anything else you like to add, do it. Nah, just glory to God. Yeah, man. If it weren't for the unseen power and the force, I wouldn't be here and I wouldn't be doing what he's got planned ahead. And that's yeah. what we've got to do sometimes. Jump out of the driver's seat and let the unseen take charge. One final question, yeah. Do you believe you're living in your purpose now? Like true purpose? Yeah, 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 I am. Yeah. Yeah, I'm living in, in, in the purpose and on the destiny. And it's just listening. Yeah. It's listening to life and it will gravitate you on track to what's right. Yeah, man. Mm. Thank you, Uduwe, man. I appreciate you. you coming on my channel. Yeah. Uh, just ja, like, share, subscribe. Stay blessed.